most people are like, like, where are you from? Oh, I grew up in Glacier. What was that like? You know, as if I have like another childhood in an urban environment to relate it to. So it's like, I don't know, being a kid was sweet. There was mountain biking, there was BMX biking, there was snowboarding in the winter. I was super lucky that of 150 people, there was four boys born within six months. So I had like a really tight group of friends and uh, we just lived outside, you know. The whole town would look out for you, you know. There was never, oh, what happened to Lucas, you know, because someone would be calling from up the street saying I was getting in trouble here or there. I mean, looking back and like comparing it to what I see a childhood would be in an urban environment, I think it was fucking awesome. Uh, but yeah, I don't have anything to relate it to. <laughs> <laughs> My parents got me a 99 Asylum snowboard from the Mount Baker snowboard shop for my fourth Christmas. There was two feet of snow in Glacier and I rode from like in between Milano's and where now the ski shop is. That was my first ever run on a snowboard. That was when I started snowboarding, more or less. I think it was my buddy Cody from Glacier. We were like fuck, we're probably eight or nine and his mom had learned about this like nationals contest, USASA it was. And my mom was extremely supportive and involved in what I was doing and she's like let's let's go check it out you know and like we were Sean, like I don't know how I knew of Sean White at the time but I did and I remember that was the big deal we were going to go down there and compete against Sean White and all, all the locals were like oh you take him out in the there was a border cross event they're like take him out in the border cross you know and I knew how to snowboard but I didn't you know we didn't have a half pipe we didn't have tricks so I won the border cross I won the giant slalom and I won the slalom but didn't do super well on half pipe or slope style. I'd never ridden one. And uh, that became kind of like my focus over the next little bit. I didn't like train or anything, but as a kid, we'd go to events, you know, and it'd be me and my mom and dad and sister camping in the van at the lot. You know, all the other kids are staying at the hotels and I somehow ended up on the competition circuit. And then that evolved into uh, you know, I was doing Grand Prix and starting competing with like the Olympians and doing like the pro halfpipe circuit. But, you know, 15, 16, push came to shove. They had coaches. They didn't have to go to school in the middle of the day so they could go train in the halfpipe. And I just couldn't sustain it anymore, pretty much. Like, living at Mount Baker, trying to be a professional halfpipe kid is not just improbable, it doesn't make any sense, you know. It's kind of going the wrong way. I went to Mount Baker High School which was, I mean, a fiasco from the beginning. None of my teachers were very supportive of what I was doing and the fact that my parents were like pulling me out of school to go to these contests to travel. And it, was a, it was a battle, like my whole schooling thing was a battle. And I wasn't, it's not that I couldn't handle the material, I just wasn't motivated for it, you know, like I didn't care. And then I got an older girlfriend that lived in town. I kind of got hooked on drugs. So pretty much snowboarding was over for me by 17. That was like the peak of me fucking up. That was like when everything went bad. doing but Nate Lynn called me up and he's like let's go snowboarding he's like come up to Baker and hit the fucking cat gap with me I'm like all right cool you know I went up there landed like three tricks and they're like holy shit dude like let's keep riding you know and so we went and filmed another day and then Nate was like I'm going to South America with Jeremy Dubs you're coming with I think Nate was very aware of what was going on in my kind of like personal life and pretty much forced me to come to Chile with him I think I was supposed to be there two weeks. I stayed a month and a half. Got back from Chile, had a video part. I showed it to Jesse Bertner. He's like, sick. And then just, just work, you know? Got to film with Transworld, and then People Films invited me for a video part, and then Justin Hosnick invited me, and it was just like, no fucking way, like I'm filming with Absent Film.
craziest thing for me is to think how such minor occurrences could have changed that whole outcome, you know? I mean, like, so many things that were out of my control just took place that changed my life. It's crazy to think back and look how easily it could have gone a different direction. Like, Nate was huge for me. He, he gave me a path. And then Jesse Bertner, like, that was like the nail in the coffin. He's like, you can do this, and if you fucking work hard, you're gonna crush it. Jesse really, and like, showed me the way that like, you really can do this. And I took all of that aggression and focus and whatever I was doing with the drugs and just shifted it into snowboarding. It was hard, like, those drugs are addicting and you can't, like, to this day I still think about them. Snowboarding saved my life, Nate saved my life, I saved my life, I don't know. But that was like, switch flipped and I'm like, no, I have this talent, I have this skill set, I'm gonna fucking do it. And I worked my ass off and still like reeling from it, I guess.